For many years, the brain researcher at the Negev had a dream to make a, a real brain research and fMRI. The unique location of the MRI here at Soroka University Medical Center enabled us to make a clinical research and basic science research and then to combine them into a very meaningful research. In her research about the visual system, which is conducted in the psychology department at Ben Gurion University, we try to understand how the visual areas in the brain process complex information. We use the MRI scanner, which is located at the Soroka Medical Center. What we do is we scan subjects while they view different images from different visual categories, and we examine uh, the brain activation for uh, these different stimuli. It turns out that different brain regions are actually selectively activated by different visual categories. One of the things that we study in the lab is a group of individuals who suffer from specific impairment in face processing. What we found is that these individuals actually exhibit normal pattern of activation for faces in posterior parts of their visual system, but they actually show reduced abnormal activation in regions that are related to the face processing network that are located in more anterior parts of the brain. What we think is missing or is impaired is the connectivity, sort of the, the wires that connect these more posterior regions to this region here. Another question that is related to face processing and that is very interesting for us is the effects of the emotion the face portray on the brain activation, on the way uh, in which the, we scan, we visually scan the faces, and on the physiological responses that uh, emotional faces elicits in us. For individuals, for example, with autism, who have difficulties in extracting the emotional response of uh, the person that they are looking at, it turns out that they hardly look at the eyes of the person standing in front of them and they prefer scanning other features such as uh, the mouth or even features around the hairline. Ever since Goodell and Milner suggested the idea of two separated cortical streams, the dorsal action stream and the ventral perception stream, there were numerous evidence supporting this idea. Our study aimed to address this issue. In our task, two objects that differed slightly in length were placed within a version of the Ponzo illusion. Participants were asked to grasp one of two objects using their thumb and index finger, depending on an auditory command they heard, long or short. short. We tracked the grasping trajectory using the OptiTrack device and measured the maximum grip aperture, the MGA. Long. Even though participants were largely affected by the illusion, their maximum grip aperture reflected the real size of the object. Short. The pattern of result indicated a clear double dissociation between action and perception. As humans, we need not only to perceive the world around us, but also to act on it. This means that even though our perception is affected by visual illusions in our surrounding, our everyday visually guided actions are not affected by them. In our future studies, what we're hoping is that by understanding the way the brain encodes and represents visual information and by understanding the psychological basis of uh, visual perception, we may be able to create, for example, specific training regimes or rehabilitation programs. This is a dream uh, come true. 
and uh, we really hope that many researchers will come uh, now to the Negev. This collaboration was made possible by the vision and generous support of the American Associates of the BGU University and I'm very thankful for this.